This program is brought to you by Presented by ACA Race Production Marketing Incorporated In cooperation with Phil Expo Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry Foreign arrivals increased by about 8.5% in the first eight months of the year. But this is just statistics. The Boracay experience has taught us many lessons that are worth considering as we try to implement and pursue the targets under the National Tourism Development Plan. Fresh from the reopening of Boracay, the Department of Tourism gears up for more proactive programs and projects to achieve targets and address issues. To update us with these developments is the Undersecretary for Tourism and Development Planning of the Department of Tourism. Please welcome to Business and Beyond Undersecretary Benito Bengzon Jr. Sir, good evening and welcome to Business and Beyond. Good evening, Lisa. Okay, Boracay muna kasi yun yung hot topic sa industry. So, kumusta na sir yung Boracay? What has changed and what's forthcoming? Right now, the general feedback has been uh, very positive. Um, the efforts have been focused on rehabilitating uh, the island and making sure that uh, prospectively, all the tourism activities uh, in the island would be sustainable. But I have to emphasize that... Uh, the efforts are not only with respect to the physical aspect. No? I think what's even more important is really changing the mindset of all the stakeholders. No? I think this is the more important part of it because the rehabilitation of Boracay should mark a turning point in the way we develop uh, tourism destinations in, uh, in the country. And uh, hopefully the lessons that uh, we've learned in Boracay would compel us to take extra efforts no, to make sure that we achieve an optimum balance between tourism development and protecting the environment. Okay, parang Pandora's box, sir, yung Boracay, no? It unearthed so many issues, governance, environment, mindsets. Alright, let's go back a bit, sir. What was the marching order of the President and the Undersecretary or the Secretary um, in the, in the years ahead, uh, especially within the term? Well, ang, ang instruction ni, ni Presidente is to make sure that um, we achieve uh, an optimum balance between um, the econo economic activities and um, uh, sustainable uh, and inclusive no, form of tourism development. We will now have to make sure that whatever activities we introduce in any of our destinations are sustainable. The instruction also of the President is for all the other destinations to step up and for them not to wait no, for, for national government um, to swoop down. Sir, uh, I'm, I'm sure this is already consistent naman in the, in the in tourism development plan. No? Where are we in the targets and, and the plans there? Well, almost uh, halfway through the National Tourism Development Plan of uh, 2017 to 2022. No? And briefly, ang strategic direction natin dito is one, to improve the competitiveness of uh, the country. And second and more important is to make sure that tourism is even more inclusive and sustainable. Ang dapat hindi natin kinakalimutan is yung aspeto na kailangan napapangalagaan natin yung ating uh, environment. And that is also a, a very important uh, objective under the National Tourism Development Plan. Sir, of course, in a globalized environment, no, we cannot help but compare ourselves with our neighbors, no, especially in ASEAN. Um, how far, how close are we uh, in terms of um, accomplishments, in terms of tourism sites? We are an, I, I, an, I, uh, an archipelago. archipelago. So, ang ibig sabihin niya, yung mga turista sa atin, pwede pumunta lang kapag lumipad sila and a very small percentage that come here on cruise ships. Wala tayong cross-border traffic like uh, what most Southeast Asian countries enjoy. Yeah, so, landlock most of them. Landlock sila. No? So, sasakay lang sa bus, sasakay oh, oh, lang sa kotse, tatawid. 
may bilang na sa kanila. So, I think the more, the more um, um, indicative performance indicator when you look at um, um, head count is to look at gano'n ka namin sumakay ng aeroplano. Diba? Kasi wala tayong mabibilang na yung land travel. Eh, no? So, <clears throat> If you confine it to just the air passenger traffic, hindi tayo masyadong malayo. Promotion naman um, abroad, um, it, this is very expensive. No? And resources is always a problem. How, how is uh, the OT's um, uh, resources now? Are we up to the challenge of uh, meeting the targets based on the budget that you have? Marketing and promotions budget of uh, the Philippines is a, is a fraction of what our, again, what our neighbors have. So, Ang ibig sabihin lang nito is that we have to be more disciplined when it comes to determining where we will engage and how we will engage. So una-una, pipiliin muna natin yung mga country markets. We have to make sure that whatever limited resources we have are invested in those that will provide the returns. But at the same time, if we want to grow the business, we have to look at uh, opportunity markets, the newer ones, no? yung mga bagong bansa na with the right amount of intervention will provide the returns that we're looking for. What will um, to define our initiatives in the next few years is really the, the, the steady uh, shift towards the digital platform. Okay. And how are these re markets responding to our uh, promotional campaigns? The, the markets are responding uh, uh, favorably and the numbers will attest to that. Um, right now, we are growing by about, uh, for the first nine months, about 8.5%. No, we're doing much better than uh, most other countries uh, in the region and around the globe. Okay, sir. So now your message. Well, our, our key message really is to, to all the stakeholders to continue to push for tourism because it's a, it's a major contributor to economic growth. It creates employment, you know, it contributes to GDP, but more importantly, it builds communities and improves lives, no, at, especially at the local level. But we have to make sure that all the initiatives are sustainable. And for us to achieve our collective goal of, uh, of a, a sustainable uh, tourism industry in, in the Philippines, we have to make sure that we work together. We have to make sure that we follow the laws and the ordinances so that we avoid you know, many of the problems that, that uh, we're seeing, but more importantly, it's really changing the mindset, no? uh, changing our mindset no? to, to uh, always keep in mind that there is an optimum balance between tourism development and protection of the environment. Okay, thank you very much, Yusek, for having me. Thank you, Lisa. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. most important ingredient for the success of any coastal water tourism products that we have is the kind of discipline and the kind of attention that the local government units will give to making sure that the laws are actually applied for and followed. Uh, the second I think is that it is important that the private sector as well realizes that they do not do business alone, that they need the community to survive. And a good example is what happened in Boracay. When the place was declared to be not accessible to tourists because of the rehabilitation that was ongoing, we found that everyone was affected, not just one, one group. I think associations that are operating in areas, especially the, the coastal waters, are very important to their businesses, uh, should pull themselves together and actually meet regularly to assess what is going on in the area so that they can check that. Ang dapat nating uh, pagtuon ng pasin ang pagsunod sa mga alituntunin ng batas which is uh, of course we don't want to suffer again the same fate na nangyari sa Boracay. So yung mga nadi-develop na area ng destination should be properly uh, obey the uh, waste management uh, system ng local unit. 
para walang problema sa future development ng isang destination. We also advocate yung mga sinasabi nating uh, 5A na sinasabi natin, meron ba itong arrival, meron ba itong access, meron ba itong accommodation, meron ba itong activities, at meron ba itong attraction. If that five criteria ay nag sa isa, destination, I think the government and the local unit must put the effort to develop that area para ma-access ng ating mga tourist visitors. Para ma-develop yung mga destination na yan, maging maluwag ang regulasyon ng mga local unit to do business. Para madali, para sa mga investor, sa mga entrepreneur, yung mga local investor, maka-develop na mabilis para magbigyan ng mga attraction yung mga local destination. The next one that will come up is farm tourism. There has been an explosion of different products that you can buy when you visit farms. The processing has improved a lot. People are now processing from the produce of their farms, which we didn't have. You know, now you just talk about mushroom. Before it was just mushroom production. Today we have mushroom chicharron. We have crispy mushroom. We have adobo mushroom. I mean, think about it. And they're all packaged. So this is now the exciting thing that's happening. Cool, modern, 100% Filipino. This is Go Local, a Filipino concept store for MSMEs that is recently in Tokyo, Japan already. To tell us more about the story and future plans ahead, we welcome the Assistant Director of the Bureau of Domestic Trade Promotion of the Department of Trade and Industry, Ms. Marivik Banoan. Mabok, welcome to Business and Beyond. Good evening, Lisa. Thank you for having the Go Local in your program. So, what, what is the objective of Go Local and what is the coverage of this program? Well, uh, Go Local is a brainchild of Secretary Ramon Lopez. He wants to change mindsets of our consumers because our consumers may jo mahilig sa imported, mm -hmm. but we have to change that mindset. We have to love our local products, and Go Local is the perfect vehicle. So, Go Local is a market access platform. Um, we want to mainstream our products. So, mainstream meaning that our local products are now available in the mass market, they are in the malls. They are in the department stores, in online stores, in, um, in supermarkets. You mentioned that these are MSMEs also mm -mm. that have already uh, started selling their products locally. Yeah. So what is the difference between those they sell outside mm -mm. the Go Local concept store and what you have here? Oh, oh. Yeah, uh, for Go Local, we usually harvest the, their products from the trade fairs, from the bazaars, from the regional trade events. But uh, for Go Local, they are exposed the whole year round. Because uh, when you go to the trade fair namin, four days, but after the fourth, fifth day, where will you find them again? Di ba? So, it's a permanent showroom oh, oh, this and is, uh, retail store. Yeah. So, here we are in our Go Local concept store. This is our permanent showroom. So, this is a sourcing hub. For, in, for instance, our retail partners come and see the, what is new, what is newly developed. Anybody can come here and buy products or make orders. What is the profile of the products and the manufacturer here? Some exporters, sometimes the export markets are soft. So instead of exporting, they, they go into the domestic market where, of course, the domestic market is flourishing, di ba? Mm -hmm. um, so, now we have 92, 92 Go Local stores. Oh, oh, we just started with one and we thought nga, In oh, ang hirap time, naman. Ah? Uh, it, that was uh, December 2016. Ah, okay. Uh -uh. So, almost so, two years. So, almost two years na rin. So, na, naka 92 mm -hmm. na tayo. Mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier that this has been brought to Japan already. What is naman the idea behind bringing Mm -hmm. Go local to Japan and maybe other countries. Assistant Secretary Rose Bigatos brought 29 Go local suppliers to Japan. And the plan now is to bring Go local 
products to New York, hopefully, mm -hmm. if uh, there's adequate budget. Okay. Mabok, please invite our the Filipino consumers and also oh, oh. the manufacturers to patronize Golocal. You're all welcome to shop in all our Go Local stores nationwide. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mavo. Thank you for having us here. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. All right. Business and Beyond will be back. Stay tuned. Ang Barangka Credit Cooperative po ay nagsimula sa Yotex Employees Credit Cooperative. So we started our cooperative with 25 members and with a capital of 5,300. Nag-close ang company in the year 1994, then we convert it into community. So sa ngayon, ang Barangka Credit Cooperative nagkaraan ng 29 years Ngayon po ay may 1.2 billion assets with 23,000 members. At kami ho ay nagpapasalamat sa ating Pangulo dahil siya lang ang tanging tumakbo nung nakaraan na ang nangako na siya ay tutulong sa mga kooperatib sa ating bansa. At tunayan pa ho niyan para higit na matulungan ang ating uh, mga malilit na negosyante, yung tinatawag natin sa small medium entrepreneurs ay naglaan pa siya at isinama na niya ang CDA under the DTI. Kapag magitan ito, yung tulong na ito ng ating Pangulo, ito yung P3 Pondo para sa Pagbabago tungo sa Pag-asenso. Ito ay ginagamit natin sa mga member ng cooperative, lalo na yung maliliit na negosyante. So ito po ay isang solusyon para mawala ang ating 5-6 o malaking tulong ito sa ating komunidad. Sila ho ay may direkta ng natatakbuhan kung saan kailangan nila ang puhunan para sa kanilang mga negosyo. Ang credit line ng Barangka Credit Cooperative sa DTI ay umabot ng 15 million at ang mga natulungan po nito, yung loan release natin ay umabot sa 1,600 plus. Then yung ating loan release na naibigay, nung unay pagkaloob natin ay umabot sa 53 million. So in totality po, malaki talaga ang naitulong nito sa aming uh, cooperative na may members kaming uh, 23,000. At hopefully po, ito ay maging tuloy-tuloy na programa ng aming cooperative tungo sa lalo pang pag-asenso ng ating mga negosyante. Kami ay naniniwala na kung ang mga tao ay may mga negosyo, ay makaka-generate siya ng employment. Mawawala ang kahirapan dito sa ating, lalo na dito sa aming uh, lungsod ng Marikina. Kasi direkta silang magkakaroon ng mga negosyo at magkakaroon ng pagkain, sapat na pagkain sa kanilang hapagkainan. Ay simula lang po ako sa pagdadyang shop since 2014. Nagsimula po ko sa maliit na mga ilang tao ko lang ang nangangalakal na nagre-remit sa akin. Bali po ang asawa ko nag-abroad dahil sa hirap ng buhay at napilitan po kaming lumapit sa mga lending para sa po aming ikakapital. Ang aking kapital ay nanggagaling sa mga lending, mga bumbay na napakalaki ng interes at buti na lang na nakilala ko po ang P3 na tumulong sa amin na mababang interes lang po. Sa ngayon po, ay unti-unti na ko yung nakakabangon para sa aming negosyong maliit. Pinagsusumika pa namin lumaki pa to. Ang nakuha ko pong capital sa P3 po ay 100,000 na babayaran ko sa loob ng isang taon. Bali, ang monthly ko po na hinuhulog sa P3 po ay 11,000 per month. Kukumpara ko po sa Bombay na pag ako kumuha doon ay halos doble ang interest. Mula nung nakakuha po ako sa P3 ay eh medyo gumaan na po ang aking paghuhulog. Dahil lang po napapaikot na rin namin yung ibang pera sa ibang pagkakitaan. Sa aking mga kapwa negosyante na nagsisimula lang, 
inire-recommend ako po ang P3 para po makaiwas tayo sa mga loan shark na nagkakalat dito sa ating lugar. At dito po ay napakagaan po ng paghuhulog, interest, at mapapaikot nyo ng maayos ang inyong mga kapital. Exhibition centers are busiest this time of the year, but here is one facility which offers more than just exhibit space. Let's get this story from the president of the Manila Exposition Complex, Inc. and the Philippine Association of Convention, Exhibition Organizers and Suppliers, Ms. Pamela Pascual. Pam, thank you for having us here. Thank you for the visit. How, how did uh, the World Trade Center um, reach the Philippines? Is this a franchise arrangement or, or this, this thing? All right. Manila uh, Exposition Complex, the company that you mentioned, is the owner and developer of the World Trade Center in Metro Manila. Uh, World Trade Center Management Inc. is another company that owns the franchise uh, or the trademark World Trade Center from New York, USA. So if you're familiar with the World Trade Center in other parts mm -hmm. of the world, this World Trade Center Metro Manila is part of that global network. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, there are over 300 World Trade Centers in uh, nearly 100 countries no, all over the world. And each and every World Trade Center differ in uh, its business platform. What other expansion, no? because other than exhibits, you also offer, you've been offering also trainings, oh, seminars, yes, yes. and then um, for uh, tell us about this. Alright, because we are a member of the World Trade Centers Association mm -hmm. uh, in New York, whose mandate is really to promote global trade and investment. So, primordial of, you know, the fact that we were accepted as a member or as a franchise or licensed owner of World Trade Center meant that the uh, we also have that capability to, uh, what's this, to prosper trade you know, and investment. Part of that is really uh, being able to serve uh, the needs of uh, Filipino companies in terms of uh, upgrading their skills and enhance their knowledge about how to do business globally. You know. So we offer trade services. We, we have been you know, studying how we can expand the building you know, just give us two to three years and I think we'll be able to expand, you know, this exhibition hall. Because the clamor from our clients are really very, mm -hmm. you know, strong already. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, as I said, um, we want to be able to collaborate and work with foreign companies so that we're able to build their confidence in the Philippines as a partner in the business. So the only way for us to be able to do that is um, to welcome them here at the World Trade Center. And so, any message to your exhibitors, to your clients? Well, thank you very much uh, to the market, to the exhibition uh, industry here in the Philippines for continuously patronizing World Trade Center. We hope to be able to provide you more, more in terms of additional space, additional dates, because I know all of you are wanting to grow your own respective shows. So. Hopefully, given the right time, we'll be able to expand the World Trade Center. I invite you to uh, visit our website so that um, you can be aware of what uh, the lineup of events are that are happening here at the World Trade Center. On this note, we end this week's episode. Join us again next week for our continuing discussions. Please let us know your comments and feedback through our social media accounts. Remember, connections matter here at Business and Beyond.